What's happening everyone? In this video we'll be covering the most simple of all sorting algorithms, the bubble sort. In the beginning of this lesson we'll cover the basics of the algorithm, and later we'll open up a coding editor and actually implement bubble sort using the Python coding language. As always, if you enjoy the video, or find it interesting or informative, consider hitting that thumbs up. Also take some time to check out the rest of the content on my channel, and if it fits your taste, think about subscribing so you can be notified when I upload new coding videos. So to start things off, when we say sorting in computer science, what we really mean is taking a list or array of objects and returning a modified version of the list that fits some protocol. When introducing sorting, we normally restrain our discussions to lists of numbers, specifically integers, because everyone knows the natural sorting of numbers and can easily identify an unsorted versus a sorted list of numbers. But take note that we can easily adapt our sorting algorithms to higher level functions. For example, you may have a list of student objects and want to sort them by their age. When adapting a sorting algorithm to a more complex task such as this one, all you need to do is change the function the algorithm uses to compare two objects. The rest of the code remains essentially the same. For the rest of this video, I'll be sticking to using list of integers for sake of clarity. From a high-level perspective, we can synthesize many of the inner operations of the bubble sort simply by watching a video of it in action. As we can see on the GIF on the right, we have a red bar that seems to iterate over the list many times, each time essentially moving the next largest element all the way to its appropriate spot towards the end of the list. What the algorithm is really doing is, on each iteration, comparing each pair of adjacent items and swapping them if they're in unsorted order. For example, if we have two adjacent elements, two and one, we would perform a swap and be left with one and two. The swapping operation is performed on every pair of adjacent items in the list, on every iteration. You can also see that the bubble sort algorithm is contained to a single list, so we don't need to create any duplicate or external list, which is a benefit from a space complexity standpoint. You may also have begun to realize the downside to the bubble sort in that we may need to iterate over the same numbers and perform the same comparisons many times in order to achieve our final sorted list result. On the next slide we'll cover the pseudocode for the algorithm so you can get a better idea of its low-level functionality. So we can see here we're declaring a function named bubble sort that's passed a single list object A. We then enter into a forever while loop where we first set a variable swapped equal to false. We'll use this variable at the end of each while loop iteration to check and see if we performed any swaps inside of our for loop. If not, we're done sorting. The for loop itself increments a variable i from 1 up to the length of the input list a. On each for loop iteration, we check and see if the element at index i and the element at index i minus 1 are unsorted. If so, we swap and set our swap variable to true. Otherwise, we continue to the next for loop iteration. So for example, in our first iteration of the for loop, we check the element at index 0 against the element at index 1. We swap if the element at index 0 is larger than that at index 1. After the for loop, as we said earlier, we check to see if we performed any swaps. If not, we break out of the while loop, at which point the sorting is complete. If you're actually planning on using bubble sort in a coding project, I definitely recommend against it. There are plenty of other more efficient sorting algorithms to choose from, including quick sort and merge sort, both of which I'll be coming out with videos covering in the coming weeks, so stay tuned for that. The benefit to learning bubble sort, and the reason it's taught in school, is that it can serve as an extremely simple introduction to sorting, due to its inherently straightforward approach and its clean nature when implemented in code. As we can see on the slide, bubble sort has an exponential time complexity, that is, big O of n squared in most cases, and linear time in the best case. In terms of space complexity, bubble sort is fairly efficient because it makes use of only a single array and doesn't require any complex data structures, making it big O of 1. We'll now move over to a coding editor and implement the bubble sort algorithm using Python. So the first thing we're doing here is creating a function named create array that we'll be using to generate randomized arrays you can use as inputs to our bubble sort. The function is passed a variable length to specify the length of the returned array, as well as a variable max in. Max in creates the upper bound on the range of the elements used inside the array. Each element is randomly selected from a set of integers 0 up to the max in, using the randin function of the random module. We'll now just write some testing code to ensure that the create array function actually functions as we would expect. We can see we now have a randomized array of length 10, where each element is randomly chosen in the range of 0 up to 50. So everything's good. Now we can begin writing our actual bubble sort function. So first we're going to be creating an array, uh, calling it a. Then we're going to be printing out our variable a. Then we're going to be calling bubble sort on our variable a, and setting a equal to what's returned from the bubble sort. And then at the end of that, we're going to be printing out a again. So we should be able to see our unsorted array. And then after calling bubble sort, we'll be printing it out again, and we'll see that it will be sorted. So now our actual bubble sort function is essentially a direct Python analog of the pseudocode you saw earlier in the presentation. 
we'll be passing in a single array r and inside of the function the first thing we're doing is setting swap equal to true. We're then entering into our while loop right, where we're iterating while swapped is true. Before our for loop we're setting swap to false so that we'll know if we set swap to true inside of the for loop that we did have to swap something so we should go back and perform the while loop iteration another time. Inside of the for loop we're iterating from 1 up to the length of the array and then checking each consecutive pair of numbers and swapping them if they're in unsorted order. Once we break out of the while loop, we'll simply be returning our past array now in sorted order. And now switch over to terminal so we can run the script and test out the function. As we can see on the first line, we have our original array in unsorted order. And on the second line, we've successfully sorted the array. So our bubble sort function is working properly. Just to be sure, here we're going to write a short function to ensure that our array was actually sorted. We'll just be comparing our output of the bubble sort to the built-in Python sorted function applied to the same array. If they're the same, essentially that means that we have sorted the list. If they're not the same, that means that our bubble sort did not sort the list correctly. And here we can see that uh, our bubble sort did in fact sort the list correctly. We'll now write a quick function to benchmark the performance of our bubble sort against the built-in Python list sorting method function will be passed a list containing all the different array lengths to test on. For our purposes, we'll stick to the default values of 10, 100, 1000, and 10,000. With these sizes, we should be able to see a difference without having to wait very long for our results. Inside of the function, we'll simply be iterating over each of the sizes, creating a randomized array of that size using our createArray function, then timing both the built-in Python sort and our bubble sort in sorting the array. We'll record the times and at the end we'll print them out in a table format. As the results on our table show, the time complexity of the bubble sort algorithm increases very dramatically as we increase the number of elements in our array. At an array length of 100, our bubble sort needs only 65 times the amount of time needed by the built-in sort method, but for an array of length 10,000, our bubble sort needs over 4,000 times longer. Clearly this algorithm is not suited for most practical applications, but it's still definitely fun to learn and play around with. So guys, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you now have a better understanding of the bubble sort algorithm and can confidently implement it in Python. Stay tuned for my upcoming videos, including tutorials covering quick sort and merge sort, two more efficient approaches to sorting. If you have any questions about anything you saw on the slides or the code, definitely post a comment. I'll be sure to read through them all and answer any questions you may have. So I'll hope to see you guys in the next video.